Okay, this is the uh, South or Deerfield Conservation Committee meeting for April 25th, 2019, and it's 7.08. And uh, let's see what we... Present are Louis Mission. Ben Byrne. Tim Hilchey. And I guess we'll start with some uh, old business here, seeing... Joel Rourke is here for Hillside, 117 Hillside Road. Do you have some additional information for us now or for your uh, addition to the house? Um, I think you just, this is the drawing I showed you. Do you want me to come over there with it? Do you have another one or do you have dimensions and like well, we it was, about? my understanding was that you wanted to just know how many posts were going to be here. Because my understanding was you said, you need to figure this out because if you change it later, it's going to be a problem for both of us. So I went to my designer. I haven't spent money for his official building plan or anything. He said probably three, actually, a minimum of three, but a maximum of five which is what I drew on there originally, which is what you all looked at originally. So I'm hoping that you can give me the green light, that it'll be a maximum of five. Again, the footprint of the house won't change. Um, I had the wetlands delineation report done. Um, yeah, did, you forgot to give us that yeah. last time. Okay, do you want to look at that now? Do you have a copy for us? Or? I have one copy, is there a, I bet there might be a copier in this building somewhere if I could use it. Yeah, there is a copier. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I, I don't have a number for use, but we, that was one of my questions is, was there a report? Um, I could share the pertinent part of it with you if you want. Uh, yeah, why don't you just go over it? We, we do need a... We need a right. solid copy. Pardon? I said we'll need a, a copy. You'll need a copy, but it's not long. Um, as requested, Wendling, Wendell Wetland Services met at your property. Purpose was to delineate all wetlands that are protected under Mass Wetlands Protection Act and has the number. In the vicinity of a proposed addition to your existing home. With these, while these boundaries have been accurately identified, only the Deerfield Conservation Commission or the Mass Department of the DEP can make the final determination of the extent of the wetland resources on the site. Then he gives you the delineation methodology. We can probably skip over that. Yeah. It's probably pretty standard. Site description. The proposed addition will be located in the northwest corner of the existing single family home. There is an obvious wetland located to the north of the home, vegetated by plants including cattail, sensitive fern, and jewelweed. Pink wetland delineation stakes and flags, A1 through A8, were mark the wetland boundary closest to the house. The wetland contains an outlet channel. It's connected to a well-defined intermittent stream to the north. Under the state regular, all right, and then this is headed, the next section is headed wetland resource areas. Under state regulations, wetlands are broken into different resource areas, each of which is regulated in a slightly different manner. The delineated wetlands, where you put the flags, contain the following resources to which there is a 100-foot buffer zone. Bank, 10.54, the banks of the outlet channel and the intermittent stream. Ordering vegetated wetland, marked by the A-line land under a waterway, 10.56, the outlet channel and the intermittent stream. The stream on the site is not shown on the most recent USGS quadrangle. Therefore, as required by riverfront regulations, the USGS stream stats program was run, copy and closed. So I'll copy all of that for you. The watershed for the stream at a point well below your house is only 0.13 square miles far below the 0.5 square mile threshold for a potential perennial stream. Therefore, there should not be any riverfront area associated with your property. The site does not fall within the estimated habitats of rare wildlife or 
priority habitats of rare species, according to the most recent online mapping. And here's the final section, project planning. It's my understanding that your proposed addition will be located within the existing disturbed footprint of your home. And you were at the site to review work. And you'll recall the ground floor will not change the footprint. And the concept is to put posts around two sides, the north and the west, and extend the second story to be held up by those posts. And so underneath there would be kind of a carport shed situation. So it's the only disturbance on the ground is putting those posts in. How many posts? Minimum of three, maximum of five. My original drawing to you showed five. And that's across the north. <clears throat> I'm thinking that the posts across the north face are the ones that are close to the wetland. The posts that have come around the corner and are on the west face is really not relevant. I'll read this, I'll breeze through this yeah. last part, shall I? On, what is that on, the last part? Yeah, pro pro project planning. I read oh. you the first sentence and then I elaborated oh, okay. on it. Yeah. Uh, it's my understanding your proposed addition will be located within the existing disturbed footprint of your home. And that's where I want to clarify what we're really talking about for your concerns is the post. The commission may at their discretion approve this work after you have filed an RDA, which I filed. Since the work will be located close to the wetlands, the commission may require that you file a more complicated notice of intent. In either case, sediment and erosion control should be shown at the site plans that is adequate to protect the down gradient wetlands from sediment during construction. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Ward Smith, Wendell Wetland Services. So you want, you need a copy of these four pages. Yes. Can I get that done for you right now? Is there a copy I don't know, I don't know that I have uh, access to? I don't know if it's, uh, see if I, I can, can certainly it. put this in the mail to you tomorrow. Yeah, let me see if I can do it. I don't know if I will be able to. But. All right. I just want to show Mark, you got a, a second just, just to part show part you. Two, Thanks, there. Just how far are the posts from the white one? Uh, the first one is uh, about, going to be about 23 feet. Okay. And it's, uh, it's, it's all in the, here you go. Okay. Um, let me orient you. You're looking north. Okay. The street's out here. Okay. Oh, there's the wetland flag. There's the wetland flag. Here's, here's the footprint of the house. The idea is <clears throat> the house is T-shaped. Mm -hmm. This back corner's coming off to the ground, and we're going to rebuild it, and we're going to put a second story on it that extends out this okay. way. But on the ground floor, this will be. Or what's the work? This is the this is the closest work to the, to the wetland, just that one post? Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's just going to be what in the... What is it for me to list the vegetation? Is it grass? Is it trees? Is it... There's some dead leaves. There's some... I mean, is it landscape? Is it grass? Is it trees? <coughs> it's it's sort of land. It's semi-landscape. Okay. Yeah, he's got... He's got a grass area here. and Basically, this is in a, a grass area. Okay. And this is, it's a, you know, it's a walkway. Here's his driveway right here. It's all, he's going to stay within the footprint. The only thing is, you know, he's in the grass area here, and that's erosion control. Yeah, erosion control. That's, you know, that's all I would well, say. Mark, forgive me. I'm Mark Stinson with Mass DEP. How you doing? Okay. Just curious. So, question, uh, one of the things, the commission has the ability for for work in the buffer zone is to require some additional vegetation to protect the wetlands. So, I mean, Ward made great comments about, you know, Ward does nice work and, uh, you know, he's very thorough. Uh, but he's not going to get into the, to the review side that you guys do. So, you know, yeah, you only need, you know, if I may, your erosion control is just right in here. You don't even have to want to come over here. No, no, no. It'd be just right in here. Where's the equipment coming in? How are they, they going to build? This is the driveway. Sorry. And then this is gravel already right here. Uh, so is the truck going to come in and dig the house? <coughs> yes. Okay. So he's not going to want to drive over that. So, uh, so if it's here, uh, 
it's not likely, but you might have some hay bales, straw bales right there. You don't need to come all the way. But one of the things the commission has the ability for is to require additional vegetation to be planted on a site in order to protect the interests of the act. The way I look at it is, okay, we're going to give this approval to you, but what are you going to give back to Mother Nature? That's all the way I encourage commissions to look at it. So you can ask for some plantings there. If you want. Mark, I had one question too. I was at the site visit, yeah. and um, where this was flagged mm -hmm. um, was obviously wetland. You know, you could just look at it. Then there was an area of what looked like grass had been mowed for a period of time. And then there's another section of what appears to me to be wetland, but which was not discussed as being delineated on the other side of it. So there's wetland gap that's been mowed, wetland. So you're saying the grass could be wetland. So technically, there's nothing in the regulations that allows anyone to mow grass if it is wetland. So one of the things you could do, if, if it is, because board stopped this delineation here, if you think it's wetland, you can say make this a no mow area. I don't know that it is, and I'm not looking to be obstructed, well, but I just yeah, I don't know either. Um, but I, you know, the, this was my one concern about this was, you know, even if it had been mowed previously, you can still say stop is part of the conditioning of the project. But that's up to you, you know. And the, other, the only other thing that, and you may not be able to answer this, one of the questions that came up while we were discussing this is, it's going to increase the area where water is stopping on the roof, and it's not going to drop in the same place it used to drop. So we were suggesting that you needed to get some sort of rainwater control system on the backside of the building or else slope the roof so the, the water ran away from the wetlands or you know, whatever. Well, the thing is you don't know without you know, ward or somebody else, whether or not the wetlands are being fed by groundwater or right. surface water. Mm -hmm. So whether or not the additional roofing is going to make a difference, I have Probably no idea. wouldn't. I, I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know that. Where's, where's the, how's the roof going to drain? Are you going to have a drip edge facing the wetlands? Because one of the things, of course, is sometimes commissions require just a layer of gravel at the drip edge. Yeah, so like we, I think we yeah, might have mentioned that. One thing we talked about is that the, 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 um, the outer edges of those posts, then the footprint of the upstairs not being the full edges, so there'd be a, a roof and then kind of a skirt roof. You and I, you were yeah. there. Yeah, no, right. You, and yeah. we talked about that, so that was one idea. I certainly wouldn't be opposed to putting in <clears throat> some gravel. That wetland, uh, I'm not a scientist, so, but my, my understanding is that's fed by a spring. Mm -hmm. It's not fed by groundwater. Yeah. It stays wet year-round, but there's a spring there that's feeding it. And the spring comes out, and then, as he noted, there's a ditch that goes in the opposite direction of the house okay. over to a slightly larger stream. So the wetland, what happens with the wetland is it moves away from anything, any moisture there moves away from the house. Well, if I um, may, through the chair. Uh, the area that he's talking about, how soon in, in the year can you actually mow that? Do you have to wait till June or July? Until uh, <laughs> I get my mowers back from the shop. Well, assuming you had a mower. Which is sometimes June. Uh, you know, how soon can you mow it? That's a good question. I've lived there 30 years. I'm not mowing anything that wasn't already mowed when I moved in. Okay, which uh, I'm going to answer your question. Okay. Uh, some years it's May 1st, some years it's May 15th. Okay, what I'm getting at is usually a lawn that's, act, that's wetland is pretty soggy until everything dries up, which might be later. So it may be fine. I, I, I just well, really, you, you yeah. have that right. Is instead of planting, you can say, well, don't mow this area anymore and we'll re let it re return back to native vegetation. But again, that's your call. Yeah, no, I'm familiar with this. I've probably been yeah. buying it for 40 years. And <laughs> And you know, I'm familiar with the area there, and it, it's always appeared to have been mowed and taken care of that whole area. He's got goats there, so you don't want to put too many plants out because the goats eat everything. Not but in that area, area though. They're yeah. fenced a little right, farther right. back. But what I'm saying yeah. is, the area he has, you know, he has a garden, he has it's mold and stuff, and I'm, you know, familiar even before you moved in. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you know, I, I think that there's, you know, for some reason there's that one little spot right there at wetland. Is it higher up than And the, the others are... It's lower than the house. It's no, lower. in terms of the surrounding wetlands. Is it higher in elevation a couple inches than the wetlands on either side? The dry area. The, yeah, I think it probably yeah, is. It probably goes like that. You okay. know, it's, it's well, it's up to you. Yeah. But that's one option you have. If you think it's a wetland, you can say make that as part of mitigation, or you can ask for some plants. Again, yeah, I've never, I've never noticed it going by that. You know, grass was high and stuff, and you couldn't get in there and mow it. always been, okay, you know, taken care of. So, you know, I don't think there should be an issue there myself. But that's you know, the rest of the board here. But. Uh, no, I just because I'm familiar with it, I, you know, I think just a little bit of erosion control and, you know, the way he has it with the, the goats out there eating and, uh, you know, his gardens and stuff, I think, you know, the area isn't going to change any from what it is. You know, he's going to put posts, a couple of posts in and that's not really going to change. Where the posts are, are already used as, you know, walkway, gravel area, carts and mowers get parked there and so forth. Um, so it's not like, there's no area inside that post area that already isn't being used as, I guess, outdoor living space, if that describes it. I'm not. Are there flags there too, or is that for the flag stuff? The flags are here. No, I mean the, uh, the flag stone, the, the porch. Oh, it's the patio stops, stops right there, and then this is where that's right. Yeah. 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 And I don't plan on paving right, that, that carport area. I'm just going to leave it gravel. There's no paving on the property except a little apron on the, on the front. Yeah. And the property's been pretty much organic for 30 years. Um, and I intend to keep it that way. And that's part of why I don't have to drive to pay as much of a pain in the neck that is sometimes. Well, part of it is. Hey, which is good because I've been dropping off my Christmas tree for years there. We <laughs> heard <laughs> goats. We appreciate it. Our kids used to years ago like to see the drop it off. The goats come running out, but not into the wild. No. <laughs> but myself, I feel that okay. So you got at least five, five or less. Which is fine. I, like My designer said, and this is not going to be the builder, um, this is a friend who's designed houses, and he said, I would plan to do this with three because I think that's all it's going to take. But when you go before them, say it'll be a minimum of three, but a maximum of five, which is what's on your drawing. And that was really all he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just were, you know, one of the concerns too, I think we talked about is. That once you decide the distance and stuff, we don't want it all of a sudden changing your another three feet down into the right, you know, closer to the wetland and stuff. That's absolutely that, that's all. So yeah, we definitely need a copy of that. Okay. Were you able to I wasn't unfortunately the, the copier's locked. Okay. Up. So put that in the mail to you tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. what else do you need from me to okay this? Uh I think you know you're gonna need erosion control before you even start. Possibly. Yeah. Do you have any start start date or No, my next result? step is in the chronology is I call the builder Kent Hicks, you guys are familiar with him, did a big project in town, known him for decades. And he came over, he looked at the situation, and said, what do you think, Kent? He said, possibly a good project. Before you start spending any money with me, you need to go see your local conservation commission and make sure they're okay with this concept. If they are, then we can start drawing, spending some money, and then we'll go before the building inspector. So that's where I am in the process. So I'm looking for you guys to give this the green light so that I can draw up official plans, which will not vary from that in terms of distance, number of files, and then I'll go to the building inspector. 
that's where I understand. That's what I understand the process to be, and that's where I, that's where I am with it. Okay. Uh, so, from on the basis of order conditions of determination, erosion control, and uh, oh, can I make a suggestion on erosion control? How many how many maps do you have? Like you showed me, two, three, four. Okay. What you the best thing to do instead of just putting a generic statement about erosion control required because things can go wrong if you don't specify where you want it, is just draw on one of them where you want them yeah. and do it on all three of them and then initial it. Mm -hmm. And that way you just say install erosion controls per the plan. Okay. And the only other thing I think under condition depending on how you do your roof is to control the water coming off the roof with some gravel or crushed stone just um, to, you know as it dripping <clears throat> off or something like that yeah or some kind of gutter system um, and I don't know if I'd come back to you on it but nobody wants to control that water coming off the roof more than me yeah. um, it could it could make for a real mess with my building project so um, I'm going to consult my builder on that and you tell me do I come back to you on that to clarify anything, well, so we could you probably it. don't want me to divert it down into that. Right, right. Yeah, that's that. You know. Right, right. So I need a professional to advise me because I'm not experienced with it. And he may say we just need to put some thick gravel here so that when it comes off, it's stable and then sits in. Correct me if I'm off. So yeah, these guys. Yeah, just yeah, just something that control the uh -huh. the flow of water. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's simple. If it's just dripping all the way across off the roof, you know, that whole area, just have some gravel there to absorb. Okay. Or crushed stone. Yeah. Or a yeah. gutter system? Or a gutter system shooting a little ways, of, you know, away from it. Okay. But, you know, that protects you, too, with your, uh, with your yard and everything else. The right. Water for, you right. Know, and, uh, but, Right, you put those posts in, you don't want a ton of water coming there, and then that starts to erode slightly over the decades. Okay. So I would say, you know, we would want some uh, erosion control. Go grab your other couple copies and we'll get it all in the same one here. I may only have these two with the post drawings in them. Yeah. As long as we got right. one and you got one. Yeah, we got one, you got one then. And okay. Yeah, I left mine at home. Yeah, let's see. Do you guys like wattles or straw bales or hay bales? Do you guys have a preference? No, whatever. As long as it's, as long as it's not a straw, it's not even reusing okay. it around. Oh, yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. It's strong. As long as it's not so steak, You need some stakes to just to hold yeah. it in place, please. And your builder will know. Basically, you know, I, I don't, re I don't remember exactly, you know, how when it starts coming up or, or you know, the contour right here. But basically, you got to keep it from this area. I know you got the patio, raised patio. Mm -hmm. so you you got to go right up to the patio. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you get it uphill or whatever work here. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. Stuff you took the copy. I gave it. I put it back over there. Um, oh yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so my next steps besides mail you a copy of this. Anything else with you that I need to do? No, we'll, we'll get you this. Okay. Okay, just get a Xerox of this in the mail for you. Yeah. Okay, I got that. All right, and then my next step is I can proceed to presenting plans to the building inspector, right? Yeah. Is that what I do? Right. Whatever, however else you want to go, we're all set. I don't know, I've never put an addition on it. So. Well, I haven't either, so, you know, that's... All right. You'll have to talk to the... Priscilla. Priscilla. She knows all. Yeah, with the building inspector, what you have to he do. He actually, uh, when I went in to talk to her about this, he talked my ear up because he has a whole... He knows the house really well. So, okay. he was coming up. Yeah, he, yeah, that house has been there a long time. So, are we going to... Let's see. Need to make a motion, though. He's quiet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... I, uh, I would say for uh, for this project here, we, we should go with a negative determination number three. Yes. The uh, work described in the request is within the buffer zone as defined in the regulations, but will not alter an area subject to protection under the Act. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent subject to the following conditions, and that's with the erosion control and, you know, control the runoff water, roof water. Okay. Okay. And I, I'd say we, uh, I make a more degrees. I make a motion to approve uh, the determination I'll with second. the conditions. I'll second. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, you should be all set. Thank you. Thanks for your service to the town. I appreciate it. Thanks for seeing me through on this. And um, well, good luck. I'll get that in the mail to you. Yeah, good mm -hmm. luck. And thank, thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Just see Priscilla next week. I don't think she's in tomorrow. So okay. For this, I just here. I, I'll mail it to this address, Conservation Commission. Yeah, Priscilla. Yeah. Yeah, Got that'd it. That'd be fine. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. change in uh, the conditions that you thought were out there? Yes. So Naomi Valentine from SWCA, just for your record. And so last time I was here, thank you for seeing me again for the change. Last time I was here on February 28th, we thought we understood the condition of the nuisance aquatics within the pond, which primarily included this aquatic moss. Um, it ended up after the last survey that we did, which is where we collected all the data for this submission, was um, late June of last year. And when we came back after a snowmelt and the ice had receded from the pond, it appeared that the aquatic moss was quite a bit more extended than we had anticipated. It appears that there hadn't been any dieback at all over the winter and it had actually grown quite a bit more than the last time we'd been there. So unfortunately, the um, herbicide that's going to be best to treat that level 
of that specific species of aquatic moss was not in my original presentation to you all, all or nor was it in the NOI submission. So as I detailed in the um, cover letter and supplemental information in the request for an amended order of conditions, we're hoping to use um, sonar, which is a chemical named fluoridone, to treat that aquatic moss, and that was suggestion from our chemical supplier. They didn't feel that the use of reward was gonna be effective because it's a contact herbicide. Um, fluoridone is a systematic herbicide, so it's going to um, treat, it's gonna work itself down throughout the root system and kill out the aquatic moss from below instead of just killing the very large mass that's above ground um, and hopefully require less treatments. That's the idea. It also happens to be um, not that the other proposed chemicals were toxic to fish, but as everything has mild toxicity to a certain degree, I mean, these are herbicides, so they're meant to kill something. Um, they're mostly reacting to the photosynthetic um, processes of the plant, but regardless, the fluoridone is much um, almost negligible in um, toxicity to fish within the pond, which are a very nice feature within that particular pond. And so those are two of the reasons why, um, because it is much more widespread, would need more chemical to treat the above ground material. We are proposing a change to use fluoridone instead. Um, the main difference in that application process is that we would need to stop up the outlet for a period of about 45 days because you use a much lower dose that's supposed to stay relatively stagnant within the water body. So if there's any water moving through or leaving the pond, it's gonna dilute, obviously. Um, and that's just to have, um, that's a label requirement so that it is not affecting any sort of wildlife within the pond. Um, so that's the main difference with the management effort. It's still an herbicide application to treat the nuisance aquatics. Um, it's still the basic form and function of the application, but a different herbicide and a slightly different application method and time frame. Okay, do you have uh, for us uh, the schematics on the uh, chemicals and everything on that, the breakdown or? Yeah, I definitely do. I brought an extra copy just in case, but I did email that to Priscilla and I was hoping oh, that did. she sent it over to you. But I brought an extra just in case. And so what I did, um, is I included all... Okay, maybe this is... Maybe... Is this... No. No. Um, I included all of the original proposed pesticides, so the copper-based algicide and then the two herbicides, just for comparison purposes, and then a sort of like grade area is the fluoridone. So I broke it out to label information as far as application rates, um, just for comparison. This is much lower. Um, chemical process, how mobile it is in water. So the reason we stop it up is because the fluoridone can actually be pretty mobile. And that's not necessarily a toxicity problem, it just means that it's breaking down in water. Effectiveness. Um, and then the last section I highlighted was the toxicity so that you can compare them. And across the board, the pesticides that we choose to apply are really just acutely toxic to humans for the most part. And that's for our applicators really, and that's why they follow personal protective equipment and label requirements. Um, and again, very low toxicity to fish and no toxicity to other potential wildlife within or around the pond. So it was really a question of what was the best way to manage the more robust vegetation mm -hmm. that's in there now. Okay. I have a question for you, Jack. Yes. So you're blocking the outlet for 45 days? Yes. The there's a good amount of groundwater feeding through the system, so we don't anticipate that the stream that leaves the pond will have no flow or no water within it. Um, you know, or you you think? Well, we haven't stopped it or done a full groundwater study, but based off of the conditions within the pond, around the pond, the creation of the pond. Um, being a non, it's existing now, but a non-natural feature. So I wasn't aware of this. I'm not so sure. I mean, I have issues with that because we don't, we don't, we want to make sure. There's always a requirement to maintain stream flow. 
And if it's all of a sudden cut, what what is the impact? And the answer is I don't know. Do you guys know? Is there some way they could just bypass it so the upflow just bypasses the pond and keeps going? Well, that's always a possibility. I don't know. I don't know how it's fed. I mean, I don't know if there's an, a stream coming in. I mean, theoretically, you could put a pump, uh, hose around so there's still maintaining flow. That's something that might need to be looked at. But you know, I wasn't aware that they would have to do it. I don't know how that would impact fisheries downstream. I have no idea. Yeah, my question also would to follow up on that is, although this, you. My understanding is you say this is a man built this pond at some point mm -hmm. in the past was created for the school yeah. and then the water flows out where does the water flow to does it go into another stream uh the water flows out to a short stream that feeds into a wetland and there's another contributing stream that goes towards that so um i have the original noi submission if you'd like to look at it it would be figure two for the resource areas so there is another sh major stream feeding into that system. My assumption would be when the pond was created, it's quite towards the back. I would go to the last, the back cover and flip back one page. Um, I would assume that when the pond was created, that outlet to the pond was connected into that existing stream, but that's just me postulating. I don't know that for sure. So could you just come up and just yes. point to this yes, and explain? Definitely. Yeah, I thought. This one here, and this wetland system. So these are all going down that way? These are going down that yeah. way. That's, oh, that's not helpful. So is this the pond? That colored yeah. area is the Three. pond, yes. I know that this feeds into this wetland. This feeds into? Um, yes, that. No, oh, how's it do that? I go. That the, was my impression. Does the, that stream, goes does the stream flow this way? And then this flows into it and contributes? Is that what you're saying? I, I guess I would need to. Um, no, it goes down this way. It, it goes down it. this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That, that goes down. This stream flows down this way? Yeah. That flows down, that comes down okay. from the mountain. Uh, excuse me for that. And speaking then. then. There's nothing else up in here? There's nothing that crosses, do you know? Because I didn't think that much water went out of that. Well, again, the only time there's a large flow of water going out of it is when there's a large amount of storm water going in. And it's an aesthetic feature, but just being low in the system, it does receive a lot of storm water. Um, there is certainly a flowing outlet for the majority of the year. So at the moment, well, we don't know, but there's water flow out of here, and then there's water flow in this natural, previously existing mass DEP stream. Um, so, presumably, if there's water in here, it's still going to continue, but... Right, this connection here could potentially be disrupted. Addition, yeah. But this section is obviously below ground. I mean, that's paved right there. Right. So it's not really a, a feature that would support fish migration. I know they don't ever intend to let the fish leave the pond. They use it as a means of teaching kids how to fly fish within the pond. Mm -hmm. And the Floridon application um, would be done when school's not in session. I mean, are there, is there any chance that you said this is toxic to humans? Oh, only acutely. So if you had a large dose that's okay. above the maximum label requirement, and that's why I was saying it's really just toxic to the applicator because they could potentially be wearing it on their back or mm -hmm. handling it when they're mixing. That's where the toxicity comes in. It's not 
uh, prolonged toxicity. So like getting your hand in a pond wouldn't be a problem, it's just... No, definitely not. I mean, the was... application rate is about 0 0.05 parts per million above the, the maximum total um, concentration that's defined by the um, Department of Health. So if you're going to shut it down for, or block it for uh, 45 days, you're saying? Right, yes, unfortunately. So what happens when it does reach that point to overflow? Or Isn't there going to be an overflow if there's that much water going in? If there's some somehow a larger storm event during the, the that waiting period? Um, it's definitely a possibility. So one thing that we have done in the past for other ponds that are highly managed like this one, if you recall from the original permit, we talked about how they use that for making snow on their ski hill in the winter time and they draw it down pretty significantly. So we could keep it at that lower level um, throughout the application period, which would be as soon as you all feel comfortable giving us permission to treat um, sometime in early May. Um, that would that would mitigate the risk for large storm events having some sort of overflow condition. Okay. Just you know, fisheries just doesn't encompass fish. It also encompasses you know invertebrates, vertebrates, and you know, amphibians, things like that. But I I have a question: Is there an order of conditions for a drawdown or for water withdrawal? Uh, I would have to confirm that with my client because I don't, I don't manage remember. all of their permits. Do you remember anything? No. So if they've been no, drawing no, it down, no. they're taking water out for for uh, snow making. You've been doing violations for years then. I would need to confirm with him. He okay. wasn't able to come tonight, unfortunately. I'm, I'm interested now. Okay. <clears throat> so it sounds like we have questions that we can't answer at the moment. To be determined. So since this is just a, a, a you know, procedurally, yeah. uh, you know, it's an informal request, or it's the initial stage of requesting uh, an amendment to the order. So tonight you basically have four choices. One is to say we want to continue this so you can get us the additional information. Two is to say, uh, no, we have the information, we'll approve it within the scope of the minutes. Three is to say, no, we want an actual amended order of conditions. And four, you can require a new notice of intent. So those are the, the four options you have, basically. Okay. Myself, I'd like to go back out there. I've been out there quite a few times, but I don't recall now that you're talking about shutting it down. I thought there was another there was water flowing from other places, not necessarily towards the pond or away from, away the, from pond. the pond. I mean, in that stream, mm -hmm. because I think that's where the concern is right now is that 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 outlet there, and I don't recall being up there a few times. A lot of water leaving that area, if any, at the times. So I, I would like to, I would like to see I would like to go up there continue it myself mm -hmm. and do a site visit for the next meet and well. get a better idea so the board can because I don't think they've been yeah, out I think there. it's a continuous would probably be the best course get the rest of the information mm -hmm. <clears throat> and take a look and explain more how you where you're going to plug it yeah it would be know. at the outlet feature but I'd be more than happy to go out and do a few requests yeah. and, and just and just look at it. Because, like I say, what I recall is, I thought there was it was going up the mountain a ways, but maybe it's coming from this other wetland, the theater, where the the water is. is yeah, it, we can certainly go out and look at it. Is it boards or a valve? It's boards. Okay. So what happens? I mean, I think Louis already raises. What happens if you get a big storm event and 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 the pond is full? It's going to overflow somewhere. I mean, it probably does a lot anyway, regardless. Even if you have the board, I mean, if you have the boards I mean, all the way up, it's routine for big storm events. It probably goes over the boards. Yeah, I mean, I'm not aware of it ever going over 
the banks, but obviously it is an outlet that's meant to release water at a certain I know Louie knows, louie has been up there so many times. Yeah, I've what, it, what I can recall is it's almost like a small spillway. Okay. And it just goes over. Yeah. And they got a walkway, like a little bridge over it. Yep. And it's just, when the water comes up a little bit, it goes, it, it goes out just like a retention pond. Right. You know, it, it's not a lot of flow. Right. But I right. would like to go back out and look at it again. Yeah, it's certainly not a lot of flow. This time yeah. of year, as well, I'm not sure what the pond level is at right yeah. now. But. That's a, whether, you know, 45 days is going to make a, you know, a difference, I, I don't, you know, I want to take a look. No yeah. shortage or in the next few weeks for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And also, awesome if it's 45 week. days of July and August from last year, it's going to be a problem. There'll be a lot of water and because uh, we had a lot of rain. Well, not until what was it? September, October, July and August weren't bad. Oh, well, maybe I'm getting mixing my July months. July and August yeah. were kind of dry. Well, it, the, the my field was they can <laughs> draw down or not, or what yeah. the stipulations are in that. If that would be a good, you know, That's, good yeah. answer those questions, I guess. And it could. That could be an option of something that we've done in other ponds that are heavily managed, but it's not a requirement by the label. It's not a necessity. And if it did go over water during the treatment period, it would just result in slightly less effective treatment. It wouldn't be spreading toxicity downstream. But um, we should set up a site visit. Yeah, that's it. I, I, I suggest we uh, continue it and do a site visit prior to the meeting, and you can maybe have some other information for us on proposed, uh, you know, well, how you would handle uh, an overflow and everything. Yeah. And also yeah. whether there, whether the uh, water drawdowns are actually under an existing perm permitted as I'll opposed to. And the, and the water that. withdrawal. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. About because I don't snow. remember, yeah. I reviewed pretty much most of the notices. I don't remember any water no. withdrawal, which is a violation if it's been done. Like I say, I've been out there quite a few times and I've never seen over much, you know, what I would call overflow. Sometimes it's nothing's going over. Right. You know, because of just the way the weather is. Yeah. It's not something that's a heavy flow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a steady easy. flow, let's put it that way, but I recall. Right. But uh, yeah. no, I would like to do you know the site visit so we can set it up for for the next meeting, which uh, 30. That's the fifth. We're going to go with the 23rd. The fourth Thursday. 23rd of May. 23rd. Is that a. That's for. Oh, that was the fifth. Yeah, 23rd is the fourth Thursday. Mm hmm. You want to. Works, set it up? works with me I, I, at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. So. You would want could, the site visit on that day? On that day, also. Here? Yes. Yeah, we should do our chat. Yeah. We'll vote night of. Okay. I'll contact you and set up a time, you know, beforehand. That sounds good. You know, after six or whatever, six, you know, whatever works, see where we are, with what else is going on. Mm -hmm. But I would like to go back up there and take a look. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Please, when we make a motion to continue. I second it. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a nice night, guys. You too. No, that's fine. I'm sure I'll confirm with him. He's very yeah. Good. May 23. Way to put the poor lady in a spot. Okay. Okay. There's that. There's that. All right. Let's see. I have no idea how Florida was spelled, I just guessed. <laughs> but I'm, it's in the papers that she gave us, I think. Oh. Oh. No, it's just Florida, and I just didn't know how oh, to spell Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah. Assuming it's Florida. Yeah, something like Okay, let's see. Florida. The other thing I want to talk about, it's kind of old business. It's the... Uh, our uh, project out in uh, Mill Village, the marijuana farm there. 
and we signed off on with the order of conditions and I went out there uh, let's see the other day I forgot the, what the date but uh, went out there uh, and checked on the erosion control I met with uh, Chris Chamberlain from mm -hmm. Berkshire Design Group and the uh, Erosion control looked good. He had it already set up. They're not doing any work out there yet for excavation or anything on the outside. They're working on the inside, repairing the greenhouses. And the other thing he brought up was that they like to change the, it, it's not definite, but they would like to change the, uh, The replication of the wetland area that was part of the conditions, original conditions. And because now they own the property, is my understanding, that they can go into it now. And we had originally, originally, uh, they had originally proposed putting the Keeping everything on the same piece of property. The replication area along the existing wetland and yeah, I was just going to ask you to come up, Mark. And so what they want to do? This is this is what we ended up because they had some restrictions with the town at the time. They had proposed earlier to do the replication in this area here, just getting into that. But because of the property line, they moved it over into this area here. And I was out there the other day, and this is a high area. So it's, it's like a, it'd be almost like a, create almost like a pit right there. Right. And what they would like to do, it's not definite, he's looking into it making sure they do have the okay. He would like to take this area here and expand it or put it over here so it's closer to the whole wetland area. More in line of the existing. Yeah, the existing and it's right. level. It, 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 you know, it looked better, you know, it would be a better spot. Okay. For, uh, so the as I see it, but it's not yeah. nothing definite right yet. I told him to, uh, you know, if he, if he can get the okay to to go into this area to uh, come up with a new plan and he'll you know you know send it to you and okay well the procedure then he'll come back out okay. here and yeah the procedure is going to be the same as for Eagle Brook yeah you know the same concept is it just significant? accept it yeah yeah or do approve it within minutes so I mean I think that makes sense I remember the area yeah yeah, yeah we talked about at first, it sounded like a good idea up in that area, but then they came back because they couldn't go into that part of the uh, property. Until they actually owned it? Yeah, I okay. believe that's how it's... So, this sounds good. So, I, I told him that sound, you know, it sounded good to me. Yeah. If he can do it, so... Mm. But, so I wanted to... As long to, as it gets done, as long as we get the replication. So, so, I just wanted to say that, you know, they're thinking about just improving the location of the uh, retention right. area. So they're going to need to, what, they're going to check on it and then come back to us? Yeah, he's going to look more into, I, I don't know what, what the restrictions were before exactly, but once he gets that figured out, he'll come back to us. And yeah, I don't think they own the property or something yet. They were in the process of buying it. Yeah, it was. And I think there was also some concern among the planning board to try and say that some of this was APR land, and, right. and, um, and they were making an issue of that. That they're taking away some of the APR land, but now it's part of the whole farm. Right. And uh, so, like I said, he, he'll get that straightened out, but I told him it sounded like a good idea to me. Okay, sounds good. And, uh, new business? Let's see, new business. Let's get that out. Let's see where 
Where's that? Proof payment to recorder for reprinting the legal notice submitted with the wrong date. Right, so I just have to uh, approve that. It's for 89.76. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. I was going to excuse the chair. Is it okay? Uh, do you need me anymore? I was going to just be talking. No, nope, we're all, all set, Mark. Did you have any questions on the uh, Eversource or the uh, Pan Am? No, I, that, I think those are, they've been standard. Yeah. Pretty much, you know. Yeah. So, just, so we're going to go over, yeah, we'll just go over. So, it. just one thing on the uh, Pan Am. So, that's, you've been here long enough. You must remember. They came before you on a request for determination for approval of weather boundaries. Yeah. Sometimes they're good for five years. So uh, basically, you know, you ride the tracks if you wanted to, but you approve boundaries, and then then uh, Pan Am uses that to come up with their uh, their plan for herbicide treatment. Yeah. So it's pretty straightforward. Eversource, they pretty much uh, don't have to come to you or DEP on, on their yearly operational plan, they do it through another agency. So it's not something we really get into, but they're required to give a copy of it to, I think, Board of Selectmen, you guys, Board of Health. Too. Yeah, yeah, because you said, yeah, they- So it's pretty routine. And I think the railroad had that too, that they give it to, to us, but- Okay, it's good seeing you guys. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thanks, thank Mark. Okay, let's see. So that was, oh yeah, Evers. Where's the middle? Here's the, uh, are you guys here for anything specific or just here for the show or? Uh, we, we got a little project we want to talk to you about. Okay. Just one minute, we'll get you. There's the, uh, see the railroad there? No, here it is. That's the, it's just to say they're doing the herbicide. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're behind my house today. Doing something back there. Anymore. These are all just the maps of the towns there. Tensions are going through. Yeah. So, we, you know, you can say we reviewed the, uh, reviewed mm -hmm. them both and put it on file. Yeah, they're usually pretty good. It's just, state almost does that too with the guardrails. You know, they go out and mark the wetlands. And, so it's almost like some of these are like a courtesy. Yeah, notification. Okay, so there's that. Then a month reports for April. Doesn't look like anything's changed. No. Say review. Okay, uh, let's see. So we got uh, minutes and any other business. Yeah, we can check with these guys here. You guys, guys. welcome forward, state your name and Sure. Uh, my name's Andrew Dunham from the South Deerfield Water Supply District. This is Gary. He's also from the Gary district. Gary Zakarski, commissioner for the district. Uh, so we, I'm not on the agenda, obviously, but um, we have a small water main project that we wanted to complete to connect South Deerfield Water Supply District to Old Deerfield Fire District on the end of uh, Mill Village Road by Bars Farm. I can show you on the map here. Uh, so it's at Lee Road at uh, Mill Village, going north toward Bars Farm. So there's a culvert we have to cross right here, a small stream. Uh, so 
it's not within a wetland, but I'm going over top of a culvert. Um, it's going to be eight inch uh, plastic pipe. Water main or over the culvert. Just a rough sketch. So you're Alco engineering? Or no, no. That's just, <laughs> just, a, just a piece of paper. Okay. Can you can you write your names down sure. and who you're actually sure. here for? That way I won't misspell them. feet from uh, Mill Village down to this uh, fire hydrant here. So there's going to be a, a pit here too with a meter in it so that we can feed off of Deerfield Fire or Deerfield Fire can feed off of our system. It's only in the event that our filtration plant in South Deerfield goes down with like a catastrophe or the same event happened in, in Old Deerfield. We could supply each other with water. Just kind of a backup plan. And I just, just want to let you know, I went out there and looked. I, yeah. I met Andrew mm -hmm. out there, and, you know, it makes good sense to do that. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's cheap insurance. Yeah. <laughs> You're familiar with <laughs> No, I, I went out there and uh, I was, like, telling Andrew that, you know, it, it's, uh, he's going to be on the stay along the edge of road. Mm -hmm. And the only thing is, you know, to cover yourselves and stuff, you know, you should do a RDA. Sure. And it's yeah, like, I did do that, but I, I haven't, I didn't get enough time to put it on the side. Right, because she's got to post it and everything. Sure. But uh, the only thing I don't see here, maybe what you, you know, could do. Some silt fence. And to show some erosion control. Sure. Where you think it should go. And, okay. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do a site visit also probably. Sure. Just so these guys can... Uh, Take a look. Okay. And uh, is there any and problem? Just make note that maybe that you're going to stay along the edge of the road. Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll be in the shoulder. Shouldn't even be in the pavement. Okay. So you're in yeah, the it's over here. shoulder, shoulder. Okay. Shoulder, yeah. Okay. Is there any objection of me starting up here and working my way down? In the meantime, uh, and we have a machine for a month or two. You just see the whole thing is. Uh, if you put, you know, we got, I think, restrictions of the 200 feet okay. off the stream. So I just want you to have some erosion sure. control. Remember, yeah, we talked absolutely. about no having erosion control because it's going to come down. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, you know, if you, you get up there, but, you know, uh, I don't want to say you can come down into that area yeah, until, no. until. The main you know, thing I want to get done is just. I gotta connect from Lee Road here and I yeah. gotta go across the street. And as long as I can get it over here, then we can, it'll give me some time. Oh, okay, oh, so you just wanna work up on top of the hill. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I won't be on the, on the hill. Uh, on the hill, okay, yeah. so it totally shouldn't be a big deal then. Okay. I don't see it. It's, it's, it's when you get close to the stream here, sure. 200 feet, okay. that's when it becomes our issue. Sure. So you're talking about starting from here and going yeah, this way. Yeah, I'll be way up here at Lee Road mm -hmm. and then working down. But I, I won't be farther than here. This is like the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll have that all figured out by yeah. the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, no, I, like I say, you know, just to cover everybody's sure. bases here is just to do the RDA and okay. we'll come out and take a look at it. And sure. Like I said, I, I was out there. I, the only thing you're going to do is put some erosion control and yep. it shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, it'll look better when we're done. This <laughs> is yeah. kind of a mess there. <laughs> but, uh, so will we do a site visit before the next meeting? or? Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, not not immediately before, but sometime, sometime that we schedule. Typically, we do the same business the same day. The same day. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't know since we had one already planned whether we could do two, but yeah, well, yeah. we've done three. Or four. Oh, okay, <laughs> oh. perfect. We, we, we yep. you know, we've done them uh, start at five and get done just before the meeting. Okay, okay. <laughs> fine with me. We'll just so. But, All right. Uh, well, I'll get this to Priscilla, and then we'll, we have to do a notice in the paper too. Uh, you'll talk to her. She's, okay. She'll walk yeah. you through the whole thing. Yeah, she, okay, she usually, perfect. I think you pay and she puts it in. Okay. And all that. Perfect. So, but, you know, like I say, it's a, it's a good project and, uh, yeah, it'd be good to get should be done. have an issue. Okay. We'll do the best we can. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right, thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. later. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. All right, you guys get to review the minutes. I wasn't here, so. Oh, yeah, I got to do the minutes. I think that's about it. Well, they haven't changed from the changes I made. I'm happy with them. You're happy with them? <laughs> yeah, they were pretty good to begin with. You know, change the level wording. Do you have a copy? Uh, yeah, somewhere here. Here are the minutes. Yeah, Priscilla said she put some of the info there. Yeah, I, I, this is the only part I changed right. and, and just to reflect more what we talked about and everything else looked like. Yeah, I don't know, that was they were submitted. You know, that's fine. I didn't really, I was going to reply and stuff and say, you know, there was, the only thing, it wasn't, he wasn't definite on anything. No. But, but it's just that, we'll just leave it because Casey, he does, uh, just leave it the way he had talked about. Mm -hmm. So, well, I move, uh, yeah, I've read them too, and I move we uh, we accept the minutes of uh, March 27th. Second. Aye. Aye. I was not here. So, two, so, 201. So approved. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Aye. Aye. Uh, 8.15.